Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with a new series of, well, reference recordings. Now, I did a little Ask Dave uh, thing video, which will be the reference recordings playlist. I'll have a playlist with all these things in it, so we can talk about what they are. But just to briefly recapitulate, a reference recording is one that around which a consensus has emerged that it's A, excellent. We don't have to deal with the idea of the best, just excellent, <laughs> one of the best, among the best, two, representative of what the work can and should be in a way that makes for useful comparisons with other recordings. And usually this means an older recording as opposed to a brand new one, unless, unless there is a performance that's so stupendous that you want to claim that it will be the new reference recording, but we're not dealing with that here. That's what a reference recording is, and also it reflects a critical and popular consensus to the extent that, that a well-placed critic in the classical music universe, such as yours truly, is able to figure out what that is. Uh, to the extent there is one, and there is one, you'd be surprised. There's more one than you'd think. So, the work in question, because I think this is a very, very good test case to launch the series, is Mahler's Third Symphony. Now, why is Mahler's Third Symphony a good test case? Well, because it was for you know decades since its composition been considered a hopeless albatross of a work. It's the longest symphony in the general repertoire. It lasts about an hour and 40 minutes in six movements. It's a monstrosity. And as a result of that, most performances, to the extent they existed at all, were, well, let's just say somewhat half-hearted or done by strange unknown conductors or, you know, live things, or they had cuts, or they had, you know, people didn't know what to do with it. It was sort of out there. All of that changed when Leonard Bernstein recorded it with the New York Philharmonic for Sony. And this is the reference recording. Even people who don't like it will acknowledge that it's the reference recording because it was the first one that first of all, it's a stupendous performance by any standard. It's almost become ratified in hindsight because all of the ones that came later, which we compared to this one, um, have something of a deficit, or many of them do, not all of them, but there are other excellent recordings, but most of them do compared to this one. And so, and so Bernstein really showed that Mahler knew what he was doing, and this is a stupendous and marvelous piece of music with a gorgeous adagio finale. When I did the video on music that makes you cry, a whole bunch of people mentioned this piece, that opening of that finale, which is you know, extraordinarily, it has an extraordinary depth of feeling and, and beauty you know, from tranquility to anguish and the opening with its phantasmagoria of march tunes, everything from funeral marches to Sousa parade ground marches. Really, it's really an amazing work. Um, it really is. But nobody really knew that until this recording came out. Um, and after that, there were a lot of other recordings. And one of the interesting things about the Mahler Third and why it makes such a wonderful test case for the idea of a reference recording is that, is that there were two reference recordings for this symphony for a while. There was this one and there was the Horenstein. Now, the Horenstein has become dereferized the reference size. Hornstein came out about 10 years later, right? It was the early 70s, if I'm not mistaken. And it was very different from Bernstein, where Bernstein was extremely eruptive and colorful. Uh, Hornstein was rather staid. And the, the idea behind that was that it allowed the structural integrity of the work to come. Oh, there was so much bullshit. It was nonsense. But th th that's not the point. And the point isn't whether I liked it or not. The point is there weren't many recordings of Mahler's Third. There were so few that were regularly available that that, by default, the Horenstein, which has its moments for sure, and which sounded quite different, became the alternative reference recording for people who didn't like this one as much. Um, and since that time, there have been many wonderful recordings of Mahler's Third Symphony. Of course, there's the Heitink Kitzerkebel, which 
first one, which is amazing. Um, the, the first Heitink, Mahler third, because with Heitink, you never know. There's a million recordings, it, it, which is remarkably wonderful. And, you know, nobody really knew the Kubelik at the time. Schulte's always sucked. So even the Mahler people who were doing the third were having sort of issues getting their, getting their arms around it. Now that there are a million Mahler cycles, there are some very, very fine versions of the third. I mean, the Václav Neumann one with the Czech fill, even with the wonky brass parts of the first movement. I mean, that's a wonderful performance. And there, and there are others, but we don't have to go into them because we're not doing... I did a video on the best Mahler thirds, and you can go look at that video if you want. That'll, that'll give you a rundown on it. What we're talking about here is the fact that through all of this change... The, you know, the Horenstein and the zillions of other recordings that have come out since, and Mahler cycles galore, this has held up as the reference recording. And it's held up for all the right reasons, because, because there are things that Mahler wants you to do that nobody does better than Bernstein um, in this recording. For example, there's the development section in the first movement where you have all that wild march movement erupts with the umpa band. And the tempo changes in the first movement and the, the, the garish qualities and vulgarity that's built into the music, which Bernstein realizes splendidly well, as he does in his remake, by the way. Um, and then there's, you know, that the wonderful little little chirpy animal things in the scherzo with the distant trumpet playing the Hota Aragonese and the best recording of the, the fifth movement, the bim bomb movement with boys choir and, and their children's choir in these days and, and, and female choir and alto soloist, especially that sinister interlude where you've got suspended cymbals and tam-tam and bells and thing, glockenspiels. And I, really, I, no one has done it as well as Bernstein has. And that's fact. You can compare it to any other version you want. Um, and this one will have qualities of vividness and immediacy and communicative idiomatic rightness that it's very, very hard to beat. I think there are better performances of the finale. I really do. I think Heitinks, for example, is just unbelievably gorgeous, especially those final chords. Um, the New York Philharmonic in, what was it, 1961 or whenever this was made was not... The, as great an orchestra as it later became, and people can play the adagio orchestras, you know, the ones that have the wonderful string sections and things. They can do that music better than Bernstein does it here. But as a totality, and that's the point, um, this is the one we come back to. And so I'm hoping that this little chat gives you a sense of what you need to be to be a reference recording. Not all of the Mahler symphonies have obvious reference recordings. They don't, but some of them do. And so we're going to talk about the works that do, and we'll see how far we get. I mean, we'll see how far we get into this, because it's going to be very interesting. Even the selection of works that have reference recordings is a very, very interesting process, actually, because it will tell you something about what the consensus is in the universe at large as to what the most important recordings are. And again, I don't want to use the word best because they're, they're all really fine recordings, a lot of them. And that doesn't make them a reference. There's, there's more to it than that. And we're going to try and, and, and dig down and capture that ethereal mystery uniqueness that makes something a reference. So there you go. Bernstein, Mahler 3, New York Phil, Sony, the reference recording. Keep on listening, friends. Take care.